With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? It's one called Death Crosses the River and began one morning down the Rio Grande country of Texas. California and I had just delivered some breeding stock to a rancher near Laredo. We were planning on a few days' vacation in San Antonio, so to save wear on our horses, we took the stagecoach and tied our horses back of it. The only other passenger was a nervous little bald-headed man in a black alpaca suit. He seemed to have no yen for California's conversation. I don't know, Hoppy. A horse is mighty hard in the seat of your britches, but uh, this flame cracker box shakes up all over. Going all the way to San Antonio, stranger? Uh, yes. I'll bet you're a drummer. Ain't you, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. No, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, your name wouldn't be uh, Smith, would it? Uh, yeah. Uh, you see, Hoppy, he's Mr. Smith. Oh, shut up, flabby lips. Uh, well, that <laughs> serves you right. But Flabby Lips, Hoppy, I... Say, this isn't a regular stop. There's a tree across the road. It's a hold up. Get on the coach. Get out all make Swiss cheese out of that box. We better do as he says. There's a dozen riders out there. Santos, keep that driver covered. Hello, Parker. Taking a trip for your health? Killed? Well, I, I wasn't running away. I, I was coming back. What's your idea? This stage ain't carrying no money. Stranger, keep quiet and keep healthy. Parker, hand me your bag. Hey, sure. Hey, hey, here it is, Kelt. Take it. Thanks, I will. Here's something for you, Parker. A little comment from the boss on your behavior. No, 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 please. Ah, ah. Why, you dirty murder. Hold up on you. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shut Blabbermouth up or I will, for good. In fact, both of you better forget this. Because if you talk, that corpse is going to have company. All right, couple yellows. Well, there goes the coldest killer yet. And you came mighty close to meeting Gabriel, California. Yeah, me and my big Blabbermouth. Blabbermouth? Uh, why, that low-down skunk can't call me that? Uh, All right, close mouth. Untie our horses. We'll pack Parker's body back to Laredo. Sir, to Laredo? Hoppy, no. We don't want to have no uh, cops for a company. Uh, you heard what Cal said. We you... have to turn in that bag of Parker's, California. Bag? What bag? He gave his bag to that killer. No, he made a switch. I saw him. That was my bag he handed Kells. His must still be in the coach, and I have an awful yen to see what's in it. Yeah, there it is. Now we'll open it up and... California, look at this. Hoppy, is that real? It's real, all right. We just fell heir to about $50,000 in cash. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Death Crosses the River. On the stagecoach from Laredo to San Antonio, Hoppy and California witness a strange robbery and murder of a fellow passenger. After Kells, the killer, has gone, they find that their bags were switched, and opening that of the murdered passenger, they discover it filled with money. We now find Hoppy and California taking the bag and the body of the man back to Laredo. Ah, uh, it's no wonder that killer wanted this bag. He'll sure get a surprise when he finds all he has is my extra clothes. And taking Parker's body back will show Mr. Kells he can't scare us. Yeah, you want to bet? Now, California, you know you wouldn't have let Kells run you out of the country. I know, just the same. It's times like these I wish we was cowards. I have a hunch we'd live longer. <laughs> yeah. We'll get lots of action when it's nosed around that we dropped off a little black bag at the sheriff's office. Oh, that's real nice. Hey, took a look at that big wagon up ahead. Huh. 
Good gravy. What is it? I don't know, but it's got lots of color. Looks like a sunrise with yellow jaundice. Wonder what it's stopped for. Montagui, the magni... Huh? He's a foreigner. <laughs> That's Montague, the magnificent. I wonder if he'd mind carrying that body into Laredo. Hey, I'd sure like that. Anything to get it off my saddle horn. Hey, hey, you up in the wagon. Uh, no answer. Let's take a look. Well, no wonder he's sleeping. Sounds more like he's gargling with sheep tip. Hey, Montagui, wake up! <clears throat> hey, Montagui, you... <laughs> Please, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. And it fits that horrible bellowing. <laughs> Who's bellowing? I recognize that other. What, Shakespeare? Uh, what? A soul in this benighted wilderness that has read the bard? Eureka, it is a millennium. No, it ain't neither. It's February. Yeah, I can see you don't share your companion's wealth of mind. My modern Caliban, and your abysmal ignorance is none relieved by your grizzled appearance. But permit me, I am Montague. I am Hopalong Cassidy, and this is my partner, California Carl. Delighted, sir. Excuse my curiosity, but is that a deceased person dangling across your saddle, old and battered? Uh, old and... Uh, why, you long nose, four eye tender food. I'll show you who's old and battered. Break it what? up. Wait a minute. Well, yeah, it's a corpse, Montague. We we're hoping you wouldn't mind carrying it into Laredo. Well, I suppose courtesy demands that I submit, uh, much as I detest the defunct company. Put him here, back of the seat. I can put him back in the wagon if you'll open it. Then tag her well. Please allow me to decide where I prefer my cargo. Back of the seat, if you will. All right, all right. Uh, I've been a soldier, actor, author, chemist, and maker of bad doctoral. I guess it's only fate that I now become the driver of a hearse. How did he reach uh, his deplorable condition? He was murdered. You wouldn't happen to know a man named Kells, would you? I would rather uh, gather you think this Kells assisted his shuffling off the mortal coil. That's right. Do you know him? Oh, quite. Around Laredo, is well known as a dangerous man. Works for Bramwell's importing company as a trail boss. You seem to know Laredo rather well. As purveyor of learning, distributor of printed wisdom, and itinerant master of the children of this area, it is easy to hear of many things. Well, thanks, Montague. Uh, we'll be seeing you in Laredo. Take my warning. You'll do better to avoid it, my friends. Uh, from what you've told me, only trouble awaits you there. Ah, busy little town, Laredo. Let's have a talk with this Bramo first. I have a feeling that he should know about his trail boss's activities. Well, we won't have to look hard. Uh, there it is at the end of the street. Big warehouse with a sign across the top. Bramwell Important Company. Let's mosey down. Ah, I'll go in alone. You stay out here and guard that bag. <laughs> Uh, what you gonna do? We can't stay here in this hotel room forever. I know. But Bramwell told me Kell's a temporary sheriff now. After the regular sheriff and the Texas Ranger are killed and, and the way of Laredo across the border. Yeah, and that Parker was his accountant who'd run off with their money, which Kell's returned, but uh, why? I'm stuck, California. I don't know where to turn. This thing is a mess. It just doesn't make sense. Let's go to Santone, huh? We can't. We have $50,000 that belongs to someone. Now, let's think. We know that Parker was Bramwell's accountant. According to Bramwell, he ran off with money. Kells chased him, caught him, killed him. And uh, returned the money to Bramwell. Only he couldn't have because we have it. Then Bramwell lied to you. Well, it looked like it. But that's ridiculous. Kells must have reported us as being passengers and witnesses to Parker's murder. Bramwell must know we have the money. Why did I lie to us? 
All he has to do is claim it. Let's go to San Uh oh. We got company. Do we want it? Uh-uh. No. Uh... Correct. Come on in there. Open up. Well, we might as well live like heroes. Yeah? Back up and be quiet. Yeah. A gun. Dang, if this ain't the unfriendliest town... Shut up. Chatterbox. What's your business with Bramwell? What did you do that made Kells all fired mad? Why is he on the prod for you? Question one. We saw Bramwell's accountant Parker murdered. Question two. We got something Kells overlooked. Same answer for number three. Question from us. Who are you and what do you want? Never mind that. What do you know about gun running? Gun running? Oh, now, look, we just came here to deliver some cows. You know, with horns and, and a moo, uh, not triggers. Uh, all right. A word of warning. Get out of town and stay up before Kells finds you. Well, that about makes it unanimous. Yeah, we're as popular as the hoof and mouth disease. And one thing for sure, we're in the middle of no ordinary affair. Gun running is big business. My bet's on that Kells. Maybe, but Bramwell said his boss has the organization. And the wagons and mules that take the haul guns. Yeah, that's right. He mentioned the sheriff and ranger getting killed in the wave of Laredo across the border. The ten to one bet they were killed over this same affair. Only I can't figure it out. Wait. Listen. What's that shouting outside? Let's open the window. Hey, you down there. What's all the fuss about? Hi! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Death Crosses the River. Hoppy in California have found themselves involved in a strange affair that centers around gun running, murder, $50,000, and a man named Bramwell. It was his accountant that was murdered, and by Kells, his trail boss. It's also possibly his money. And now his warehouse has caught fire. From the window of their hotel room, Hoppy and California watch this latest development. Well, they're getting it under control, California. Centered in his office. Let's use that fire as a cover and slip out of town. Uh-oh. Now you're talking. We're going to San Tone? No. Uh, come on. Greetings. Kells. Uh-oh. Shut up and back up. This hall's a little public for what I'm going to do. I hope you realize that killing us is highly illegal. Where's the Bag. 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 California, you see a bag around? Bag. Bag. Uh, Still want to be funny and play games? Want to try that without a gun? Where's that money? Uh, Next one will hurt, Cassidy. And you, Carlson. Maybe you better get on that bed and lie face down. All right, I'm a goner. But this ain't the end, Kel. Now, Cassidy, turn around. I'm going to make you talk the hard way. Ever heard of a garrot? I have a leather pig and string here that makes a good one. I can make your head swell like a balloon. Come on, turn around, I said. Ha, ha, ha. I think you're the one that should turn around, Kells. You forgot to close the door and you got company right behind you and holding a gun. Uh, save those old gags for a chump. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Thanks, Stuart. I think Mr. Kells was about to be a problem. It's my pleasure. I hope I cracked his thick skull. Now, come on. You better get out of here and fast. I've got horses out back waiting. Wait, I'll get my bag. <laughs> Kel should have looked under the bed and saved himself a headache. Well, we're in Nuevo Laredo. You'll be safe in Kel's here. Now then, tell me... Just what is your part in this? Will you tell us why you conked Kells and saved our bacon? I conked Kells because it's part of my duty to prevent murder when I can. I thought so. Texas Ranger? That's right. On special assignment from Washington. Uh, to stop gun running? Check. Report reached Washington that guns in large numbers are being smuggled across the border and into the hands of a bandit leader. Pretending to be a revolutionary. His headquarters is just north of Monterey. There's only one way the guns could have traveled. That's through Laredo. And you think Kells is taking them across in Bramwell's wagon train? Here's what we know. 
Bramwell sends empty wagons into Mexico to pick up consignments of registered imports. His wagons are the only means by which a large number of guns could travel. And kills his wagon boss, who's had strangely good luck in passing through bandit territory safely. You think the bandits don't attack him because he's working with them? It would figure. But we checked Bramwell's wagons from the time they leave his yard until they're across the border. We found nothing. Well, no, go. Yeah, we know who our cook is, but uh, just try and prove it. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, here's a little something you'd better take care of. This bag. Here. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> You've been acting like it's full of money. <laughs> <laughs> Where are these? It is full of money. It was Parker's until he was shot. I thought it was Bramwell's, but he swears that Kells returned his money. I'll have a sent to Ranger headquarters. They'll find a claimant. Oh, blast it. I wish I could send the case in. It's easy. But now I'm afraid Bramwell's burning of his record indicates his awareness of our investigation. He's probably ready to quit. Maybe. Or maybe that's what we're supposed to believe. When is the next wagon train due to leave Bramwell's for Mexico? Tonight. But we won't find any guns in it. Uh, perhaps you don't check out on it at the right time. I have an idea. Can you get Mexican cooperation on this? I already have. But I can't get the rallies in time to stop that train tonight. Well, send a man after them and meet me here in the Wave of Laredo uh, right after dark. We may wind this up tonight. That sounds good to me. All right, can do, Cassidy. Hey, where do you think you're going? Back across the river to Laredo. Back? Oh, Cassidy, you're crazy. I just rested you from there. Can't help it. I have to ask Bramwell a question. Come on, California. <laughs> He's got a question to ask. We ride right back to spit at the devil. <laughs> that Cassidy is a man. <laughs> There's the Rio again, Hoppy. You sure you've got to go over into Laredo? Has to be done, California. Well, look, someone's crossing. That wagon. Hey, it's old Slick Tongue in his boat. Yeah, for a sleepyhead, he gets around. Hi, uh, Montague. Well, if it isn't old and decrepit. And Mr. Cassidy. Hi, Montague. How's business? Prospering, sir. Prospering. By the way, here's a book I think you need, old and faded. Uh, a present. A present for me? Yes. Well, thanks, Montague. Hmm. Uh, the pleasure of ignorance. Uh, why, you low down coffee. Yes. Although it is entirely conceivable that you are correct to a degree, I resent such imputation from you on the grounds that you are mentally incompetent, irrelevant, and I suspicion immaterial. Uh, but, uh, well, 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 I'll be a not need son of a strapping mule. What an intriguing ancestry. I can see its truth. Would you explain how this remarkable genesis came about? Uh, Hoppy, Hoppy, did you ever hear such language in your life? Why, if I thought he was saying what I think he's saying... I'd, California, uh, California, put that gun away. No, Montague, you've done enough insulting for one afternoon. Now move along. As you wish, Mr. Cassidy, but he is such a remarkably apt subject for insults. Good day. Why didn't you let me plug him, Hoppy? Sure, just a little Take bit. Take it easy, California. I have a feeling you may get enough shooting tonight to last you. Come on, if we're going to get back in time to meet Stuart, we have to make track. All right. But doggone it, for a nice hombre, you got the dangest itch. Never in a hurry till there's someone going to shoot at us. Then you can't wait. I'll never get old. <laughs> Well, Stuart, there's your proof. Kells and his wagon train is down that ravine loading guns. Yeah, I'm seeing it, but uh, I still don't serve it. Ten wagons loading guns. Well, where'd they come from? How'd they get across the border? One thing at a time. First, Bramwell is innocent. He, he's what? Oh, say, you are crazy. I'm looking at his men loading his wagons with smuggled guns. Sure, but they're not under Bramwell's orders right now. He's got a nice business. No reason to deal in gun running. I found out he didn't lie about getting his money back. It was Kells who lied, trying to cover up for Parker's murder. He also started that fire in Bramwell's office. Yeah, there never was no money stolen from Bramwell at all. Parker stole it from Kells. It was gun running profits Bramwell never knowed about. Kells reported money missing, tracked Parker down, recovered that bag he thought contained his money, 
and murdered Parker so he couldn't talk. Then Kells is the leader of this gun-running outfit, huh? No. Kells told Parker he was acting on the order from a boss. Uh-oh. Looks as if the loading is nearly finished. We'd better move in. Yes, but the Rurales aren't here. We can't take them alone. We have to. Want to try a trick? See, you know, I'm wondering if you shouldn't be wearing the badge. <laughs> All right. Deal a hand, I mean. It's too dark for them to see much outside of their fires. You take one rim of the ravine. California, take the other. You'll make me a deputy for about ten minutes. I'll split the middle and arrest them. Oh, just like that, huh? You walk in on 20 smugglers and arrest them. <laughs> Cassidy, they'll drop you in your second word. Not if they think they're surrounded by rangers and rurales. That's your job. When I yell up for proof, give me proof. Well, like what, Hoppy? I don't care. Yell, shoot, do a fandango. Make them think the rim of that ravine is lined with men. Well, it might work. If they're surprised enough, they may give in before they notice anything's full. It'll work. When they see me walk in alone, they'll think I'm covered by an army of men. And if they don't, <laughs> goodbye, Cassidy. All right, let's try it. Me, I'm starting to say some prayers. Underlay, Ambrose. Get that last wagon loaded. Pagos. Start covering up that last fire. You want to roll in five minutes. As soon as the boss comes. Kells, throw up your hands. Stand right where you are, everyone. You're surrounded and under arrest. Cassidy, you. This is impossible. Men, don't. Shut up, Kells. Tell them to drop their guns or I'll drill you. Uh, you're, you're bluffing, Cassidy. Do you think I'd dare walk in here unprotected? Captain Carlson, your men ready to fire? Ready and waiting. Major Short, your men ready. Ready, Captain. And it's true. They're on both sides of us. And looking down at you here in the firelight, want to fight it out? No. No, men, drop your guns. Don't fight. They'll massacre us. Drop your guns. That's right. Now line up. Hey, one of you men up there, come down and help me pick up these weapons. <laughs> I don't think they want to fight. Well, Hoppy, that's the last of the guns. And Stuart's back hog-tying the last of the men. Shh. I think we're going to have company. The leader's coming. It's a wagon coming around the bend. Hoppy, it's Montag. I know. Hold it, Montague. You're under arrest. Yes, what on earth is going on? I'll give you a guess. Your boys got caught, that's all. In short, the game is finished. Done. My boys... Mr. Cassidy, you flatter my virility no end, but hardly my intelligence. You can skip the debate. When it was certain no large wagon trains crossed the Rio Grande, the answer was simple. One wagon crossing many times. You stocked this cache of guns here for Kell's wagons to pick up. Yours was the only wagon that crossed the river regularly and without being examined. Perhaps you hadn't noticed uh, it's also filled with books. I doubt it. No, you gave yourself away when you made so many trips to Nueva Laredo. You know what I found out? There isn't but one literate man living there. Hardly a large market for your wares. That is pathetic evidence, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, let me look in that wagon. I'm going to love putting him in his place. Go ahead. I'll get Stuart. Back! Back, you bought eating old rat. Get down from that seat, you windy crook, or I'll kick you off. Uh, the degradation of being taken by such as you is galling. Yet, as a token of my acceptance of fate, I have this one large book as a final present for you, old and scrawny. Here. I don't. California. Or next, Cassidy. Don't bother to draw. Ah! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. What's the shooting? California, are you hurt bad? Hurt? <laughs> I ain't even scratched, Hoppy. But I sure bore that big mouth book salesman. He was ready to drill you. I know, but are you sure you're not hurt? I saw dust kick out of the front of your shirt, and I thought... Hey, let me in on this. Who shot Montague? California. 
Montague pulled a gun out of a fake book. He's your leader, Stuart. Open his wagon, you'll find all the evidence you need. He's brought the guns over in small loads. Montague? The leader? Yeah. I'll give you the story in a minute. But, California, turn around. I know I saw that bullet hit you. <laughs> sure, it knocked my wind out, but it didn't hit me, Hoppy. It hit this darn book, Montaggy, gimme. I had it stuck in my shirt. You know something, Hoppy? I gotta take up reading. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it seems a shame that one so clever as the great Montague would come to such an end as death crosses the river. But similar is the fate of all men who stray from the path of justice to the life of an outlaw. When we meet again, Hoppy tells the story of an exciting adventure which he calls Stagecoach West. So be sure you're listening to the next thrilling episode of Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Death Crosses the River was written by Herb Purdom. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.